hello in this video we will discuss about the insulin like growth factor 1 and 2 but we will understand and focus on the insulin like growth factor 1 and how its work in our body physiology changes of our physiology so the insulin like growth factor 1 is work as a uh, insulin like and the, uh, we will also learn the insulin action so this is the insulin like growth factor 1 is used for the bone growth increase the bone growth and in length and glycogen and muscle growth but in this case the insulin will work but it will work for the development not length of the bone so the insulin like growth factor 2 is the protein hormone regulate cell proliferation growth migration differentiation and survival of the cell so this is for example in the blood circulatory system contain IGF-1 and 2 which that will bind with the target tissue with the target cell and uh, it can be bound with the insulin receptor instead of insulin while on the other hand the insulin like growth factor 2 receptor will bind with the insulin like growth factor 2 and on the other hand the IGF-2 will bind with the F IGF-2 receptor and IGF-1 receptor and in this way to stimulate the insulin receptor substrate and the SHC will stimulate the PI3K pathway and AKT pathway and MAP kinase pathway will stimulate the DNA to produce protein the synthesis of the protein through translation and the glucose will metabolize and influx due to the creation of channel of the glucose and this will lead to cell response so how it's produce and how its function let's begin to understand so this is the hypothalamus uh, which that below the thalamus of the brain and this is the infundibulum and attach with the pituitary gland this adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis but we will understand the adenohypophysis the anterior pituitary gland we stimulate to through uh, uh, through hypothalamus to produce the gr uh, growth hormone receptor uh, releasing factor will stimulate the adenohypophysis cell to stimulate the growth hormone ultimately growth hormone will enter into the blood so it is endocrine hormone this growth hormone is basically is the lipophobic and it means it will bind with the receptor remember and this growth hormone when bind with the growth hormone receptor with the adipose tissue as well as the liver for example as well as muscle but we will focus on the adipose tissue and liver for understanding better so in this way here is the receptor this is the growth hormone receptor will bind with the growth hormone will trigger the lipolysis so increase the lipolysis in the adipose tissue and lipogenesis will be decreased while on the other hand here is the insulin like growth factor 1 will trigger in the uh, liver to binding with the insulin like growth factor binding protein 3 will release and to uh, and also produce ALS also function but in this way the insulin like growth factor 1 we will focus and in this way will bind autocrinally or endocrinally when go into the blood circulatory system so it will bind with the adipose tissue adipocyte after the binding with the insulin like growth factor 1 with the insulin like growth factor 1 receptor will lead to change the physiology and in this way the growth hormone basically is the lipolysis increase lipogenesis increase and decrease and browning of the adipose tissue will increase but in this case the insulin like growth factor 1 will work also remember but during the lipolysis also produce the lap, uh, adiponectin and leptin which that is the hunger suppression and it will give the a feedback to release more growth hormone positive feedback while the IGF-1 receptor will produce uh, due to the fasting time so it will uh, pre uh, pre adipocyte and proliferation and differentiation will be occur and in this way the proliferation and differentiation it means the development of the adipose tissue while the uh, decrease of the adipose tissue and browning increase due to the growth hormone so growth hormone work differently so it means the liver which that is used for the gluconeogenesis increase and anti-insulin action so in this way the gluconeogenesis due to the anti-insulin action because insulin will work for the gluco glycogenesis not gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis 
so the gluconeogenesis means the production of glucose from the glycogen or from the fat so on the other hand here is, here is the muscle when bind the growth hormone receptor will trigger the insulin like growth factor 1 receptor to bind the insulin like growth factor 1 will lead to basically the prevent hypertrophy and promote cell growth in the liver uh, sorry in the muscle through growth hormone while the FGF1 which that promote the increased muscle size hypertrophy and mass restoration but in case of growth hormone which that prevent the hypertrophy and promote cell growth and the hypertrophy also but hypertrophy will work with the FGF1 while we, we will discuss about the bone so here is the bone which that bind with the growth hormone receptor with growth hormone will lead to development and division of the cell so osteocyte will increase while it will also trigger the IGF-1 during the fasting time so in this way the IGF-1 will bind with the IGF-1 receptor autocrinally lead to bone length formation but in this case the growth hormone will not bone length due to the baby during the early development so that is why the growth uh, of the bone length will not occur due to the IGF-1 releasing decrease so the bone length and increased bone formation while here is the thyroid gland which that when bind with the IGF-1 will lead to increase the thyroxine and triiodothyronine this will lead to adipolysis and lipolysis to increase the metabolism for production of heat so that is important things Let's on the other hand here is the macrophage will polarization when bind with the insulin like growth factor 1 but when will bind with the growth factor the um, basically is the growth factor bind with the monocyte will proliferate into the into the uh, macrophage 1 and 2 so this is the immune cell uh, function and the proliferation and development of the immune cell due to the insulin like growth factor 1 but in this case that was the fasted state but in this case when we will eat something go into the esophagus to the stomach and bolus formation and release the GLP-1 and GIP glucagon like insulinotropic hormone and in this way we will not l understand about that but when glucose will be absorbed into the blood circulatory system will lead to hyperglycemia this hyperglycemia effect will target to the glucose into the beta cell when beta cell the glucose will move into the beta cell will efflux or exocytosis of the granule which that's contain insulin go into the blood circulatory system so increase the insulin level in the blood will target to inhibit the gluconeogenesis but increase the glycogenesis and by glucose uptake and anti-insulin action will inhibit by this mechanism during the eating time so on the other hand here you can see this is the bone length uh, increase on um, bone formation basically same function but it it, it inhibit the heart hypertrophy why uh, normal hyper, hypertrophy formation because the inhibition of the IGF-1 let's on the other hand begin to understand when bind with the adipose tissue with the receptor receptor is basically you can understand the I, uh, insulin receptor will bind with the insulin and after this binding with the insulin the, um, uh, the glute channel will be uh, activate and this glute channel will um, use for influx of the glucose and that glucose will convert into the triacylglycerol by the inhibition of the human sensitive lipase enzyme due to the uh, due to the uh, insulin but in this case here is the inhibition of also IGF-1 receptor will lead to lipogenesis and glycogen formation also sometime a uh, little bit so on the other hand the ghrelin increase, leptin decrease, obesity increase and anabolism will increase, adipocyte increase will lead to more hunger but that is due to when we will eat sugar more will lead to eat more due to the hunger stimulation. So the growth hormone is released during fast uh, for lipolysis and insulin release when we will we eat food and hyperglycemia will occur. So remember uh, what you think about that insulin like growth factor will release 
during the fasting time so the fasting is very important for lipolysis and decrease the obesity so on the other hand you can understand in this manner the IGF-1 and, and IGF-2 will release during the fasting so that that is very important to the growth and development of the body uh, in the case of insulin when insulin will increase to increase the fat and uh, in this case you had learned about the uh, insulin and the IGF-1, IGF-2 uh, things.